Welcome to the Inland Sports TV show. Jeff Gorham, I'm Pep Fernandez, live at Teen Vision TV 16. Uh, and we got a big show because we're getting ready for the state championships for high school football. You got state championships, you've got all star games, you've got two Division I. Uh, men's basketball programs that are doing very well. I'll tell you, a lot is going on in the Inland Empire. Here's how, here's how today's show played out behind the scenes. I said, Jeff, we got a huge show. We got IE All-Star Classic. We got Coach Bruick in the house. We're going to be breaking down Sanji and Kaiser. Uh, UCR coming off a, a monumental, huge. historic win huge. against Pepperdine. And you're like, hey, yeah, but guess what? I'm going to have a giant steak in El Paso. That's what you were talking about before the show. Well, you a know, giant steak on the well, road. You know, we do. We, I have traveled the, the, the globe here the last uh, month and a half. And without you, many, many of the time. So I'm looking forward to going to El Paso. I'm going to get myself a, I think they said it was a 21-ounce steak. That sounds big. And I'm going to eat that. I'm going to have all the fixings, and then I'm going to call the game as UC Riverside is going to go into El Paso and take care of business. We hope so. We're going to talk more about the Highlanders basketball team a little bit later in the show. But, yeah, heading to El Paso for a, a Sunday afternoon game. So you guys fly in, you eat oh. your big steak, you play the game, and then you fly right back. I'm excited. Nothing better than a, a nice weekend <laughs> and hang out in El Paso. All right, but first we're going to talk uh, high school football here because we have a pair of teams from the Inland Empire that are in the – the hunt for CIF state championships. San Gorgonio and Kaiser both going up north to Northern California this weekend to try to bring home those CIF state championships. Anthony, punch up that very fancy graphic I stayed up all night to make all for San G Stop it. and Kaiser. It took me all night. They can't take you all yeah, night. That looks like my, my five-year-old could do that. And they would take very, them, look take at them the different fonts. Minutes. Lots of different fonts and colors right. and uh, graphics. All right, well, I'll give you a half hour. I'll give you a half hour. <laughs> Kaiser at Wilcox. That's Division 3A Wilcox in Santa Clara. That's Saturday. That's 6 o'clock. And then San Gorgonio at Rio Linda, which is the Sacramento area. That's Division 5 AA, also on Saturday at 6 o'clock. So Sanji and Kaiser both in action in Northern California, both with a chance to bring home a CIF state championship. I was hoping they were maybe possibly going to be both in Sacramento, uh, but Wilcox won the other, uh, the Northern California regional game against Capital Christian. And then Rio Linda beat my high school, West Valley, my Eagles, to advance to the state championship game. I was distraught. I was bummed. Uh, I was sobbing all weekend because I wanted West Valley against San Gorgonio in the state finals. Well, you were sobbing, but I'll tell you what, San Gorgonio is probably a little happy they don't have to go <laughs> an extra two hours to play that game. No, I know uh, Coach McClure, when I talked to him uh, before they knew who was going to be in the state finals, he said, yeah, we'll probably play someone, you know, in the Bay Area or Sacramento. That's already a long trip, but hopefully <laughs> we don't have to go farther than that. And lo and behold, West <laughs> Valley, the Eagles yeah. uh, made it to the regional game, but um, but they lost. But I can believe that they lost. I wanted Sanji to take on West Valley. So those are the regional games. Let's dive a little bit deeper on San Gorgonio here. Let's punch up those highlights of Sanji because again, coming off a, a CIF Southern Section Championship in Division Nine, they win the SoCal Regional in five AA. Jeff, this is a team that is playing its best football all season. I had a chance to go out to practice. I talked to Jordan Pichot and some of the guys and, of course, Coach McClure. They said, you know, coming off that one loss this, uh, in league play to, to Ike, that, remember, they didn't win the league championship. They won oh. CIF, but they didn't win league. There were several turning points throughout the season. One was the, the loss to Ike in league play. And then something about going on the road to Big Bear in that opening round. Something happened there. Something clicked for this team. And Coach McClure said it, it's been uphill ever since. They've been trending up the entire time. Something about maybe the urgency of, you know, if you lose, you go home. Something about that game in Big Bear, that first-round playoff game, they turned a corner big time. I'll tell you what, anytime you have a, I mean, a great quarterback, Jordan Pichot is a phenomenal arm. We saw them, remember, before week zero, we saw them scrimmage King, Ramona, and Sanji at Ramona. We had no idea that they were going to be this good. Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of, you know, they had question marks, right? I mean, because you have, you have Pichot come over from Citrus Valley. And, and, of course, and two, two years removed from a CIF championship with a lot of guys that left the program. That's right. I mean, there were some holdovers like Elijah Hall, the running back. He was part of that 2016 team. There was some guys that were from that 2016 CIF championship team. But, again, pretty much across the board, these guys were young. There was a lot of guys, a lot of question marks. Um, but the good thing was going back to last year, I think they had like – 
four seniors. Yeah. Like this was a pretty young team overall last year, so they knew all those guys were getting experience for this season, and it paid off. Now they're playing for a CIF state championship. Uh, and that's incredible. Just, you know, it's, it's nice to think that you have two teams basically separated by 15 miles yeah. are going to be playing for a state championship. Both similar styles. You know, they can play smash mouth football. They can play athletic football. Uh, but Sanji, what a great story this year. And to cap off the uh, two years ago when they lost in that state playoff, a redemption year for them. Yeah, you know, going back to that Valley View game yes. from 2016, and, and they were so close. And that was a that was a really good team. Yes, it that was, was an unbelievable Sanji team. And that was, I think, in the southern section they were Division Seven. Yes. Now they're Division Nine, and now they're one win away from bringing back a uh, state championship to the city of San Bernardino. But now let's pivot over to Kaiser High School. The Cats also in the same boat as Sanji, just one win away from capturing a CIF state championship. There's my guy right there. You know that guy. That guy is my fav- one of my all-time favorites, and that face. you can- <laughs> look, at only- that. look at that face. Only a mother could love that face right there. <laughs> and my mom loves his face, so somebody loves him. Is there a coach that's more animated than uh, Coach Cardosi right now in the game? No! There's nobody <laughs> more animated in WWE, in Hollywood. Uh, he's he's might get a Golden Globe nomination just for his portrayal of his uh, post-game news conference with us. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He's the best. Anthony, punch up those Kaiser highlights. Let's go deeper on the Cats because they do feature the top running back in the entire nation. Not, not the section, not the state. The entire nation. Christian Hunter leads the country in rushing yards. He had seven touchdowns in that regional win against Eisenhower. He went off. I mean, he's a fantastic running back. And, Jeff, you know, we've seen this several times. I know, you know, Norda Vista is one of those teams. Citrus Hills, one of those teams. When they won CIF a couple of years ago, the whole stadium knows what's going to happen. They're going to run the football. But until you prove you can stop the run, they're going to run the football. And, and it's, it's really a compliment not only to Coach Cardosi, but – the entire Kaiser football program is that they've had two great backs in two years that have eclipsed record after record after record. But it all comes down to that offensive line. Those guys are studs. Coach Cardozzi praised them. But when you have a guy like Christian Hunter who's just a super athlete, is smart on the field, off the field, uh, you couldn't ask for a better team than the Kaiser Cats. It's going to be real exciting as they head up north to take on Rio Linda uh, from the Sacramento area. Rio Linda beat West Valley, my West Valley, not the, the him at West Valley, but West Valley up north. Um, it was 21-13. to 13. Rio Linda had two fourth-quarter touchdowns to, to pull out that win uh, to advance to face Kaiser for the state championship. But what this tells me is, you know, Kaiser's a team that can post – you know, a lot of points in bunches. Rio Linda's been getting into some real, you know, defensive slobber knockers. You know what I mean? Like yeah. field position, low scoring, which defense can come up with the stops or the turnovers. Uh, this is going to be really interesting how this plays out because Kaiser, you know, when you run the football, you're going to melt that clock pretty fast. If you, you know, you're going to run and run and run. Um, we'll see how that kind of pans out. If that's going to play into Rio Linda's favor, if that's going to play into Kaiser's favor, as uh, you can see the Cats here celebrating that regional championship, which I should also add, here's an interesting wrinkle to it all so the southern california teams they've had two weeks to yes, prepare yes. for the state title game the northern california regionals just happened this weekend so the, the northern california teams have one week to play for the state finals but at this point in the season i don't know if it really matters in, I, in the big scheme of things i think for health purposes if you have anybody that was dinged up for kaiser it helps you in the in the sense that you might get guys coming back but remember this the southern section was also hampered by uh, fires in the beginning of the season, week zero, remember? So there was teams in the southern section that didn't practice for a week, and they went out and played on one-day notice. So basically it's going to even out. Yeah, you're right. Maybe the, the one factor there is the if you're, if you're banged up, if guys are injured, if you could use an extra seven days or so to kind of mend a little bit. Um, but the Southern California teams have that luxury. The Northern California teams do not with the state finals uh, this Saturday. Now let's talk about Cajon quarterback Jaden Daniels. The decision is coming soon. Kind of like LeBron James. Remember the, oh, the decision. The uh, decision. Yeah, is he going to show up with a bunch of hats and he's going to pick one of these hats? I don't don't know what he's going to do. I mean, that's kind of the traditional thing where you, you put the four hats out. We know the finalists, too, which we'll say in a second. But you you put the hats out, and then you maybe do the old switcheroo. You grab one, then you put it down, you grab another. I don't know what he's, I don't know what he's going to do. You know, I, I will say this. This is 30 years ago, but when I signed my Division One scholarship. When you signed with the Cal Golden Bears, what did you do? I 
was at my table with my parents, and I think we went out and had a little dinner at Del Taco afterwards. <laughs> but that was really, really celebrated. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, we didn't have this big pomp and circumstance, and and we didn't let other coaches down. We kind of told them, you know, a week ahead of time, so that if you were somebody was recruiting me, they weren't going to go. Oh heck, we hate Gorham. Well, so it's going to be tough. <laughs> we hate that guy. I think I just saw him at Del Taco yeah. eating a big burrito. Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of all the pomp and circumstance, we're actually going to stream his announcement live on IEMG. Oh. So you didn't have that either, did you? No. no streaming live to we, the internet? We didn't even have cell phones, my friend. <laughs> Punch up those Jaden Daniel highlights because here's the four finalists. It's either going to be Utah, UCLA, we got Arizona State now in the mix and the Cal Golden Bears. So he could follow your footsteps, Jeff, to Berkeley. He could be a Cal Golden Bear. Yeah, I don't think so. In fact, can, do you want me to say where I think he's going to go? Go ahead. We've been talking about this for at least a year, and, I've, and I have come to the conclusion that he will sign with the Utes of Utah. I would say Utah is the front runner unless something happens in the 12th hour, like right before the, you know, the clock strikes midnight. Uh, I think it's going to be Utah as well. UCLA is probably my backup. I know there's a lot of chatter online. I try to stay off those message boards and all that nonsense. There's some chatter right now about Arizona State making this push at the last hour. But I don't know. I, I still think it, I think it's I think it was Utah. I think it is is Utah. I think it will be Utah come Thursday when he'll make his announcement at one o'clock in the uh, Cajon High School Theater. I kind of want him to go to UCLA just because Chip Kelly's my buddy. He's not your buddy. Okay, he's my brother's buddy by buddy by buddy. There, so there's one picture floating around Twitter of you talking to Chip Kelly. Now you guys are BFFs. Oh, we're BFFs, of course. And, and if I had my choice, I'd say, hey, Jaden Daniels, go play for Chip Kelly. And he might. Yeah. Well, he, he still might. There's he's going to Utah. Chance. Um, okay, we've got the Inland Empire All-Star Classic coming up this Saturday night as well. So we're going to wrap up the local high school football season in a huge way. We've got two teams playing for state championships. We got the IE All-Star Classic, the 34th annual, the longest running all-star football game in the great state of California. And this Saturday, it's going to be Dick Bruick coaching the San Bernardino County All-Stars yep. against Barry Meyer and the Riverside County All-Stars. Let's go back to last season's highlights because Riverside County won this game last year at Centennial High School. And it was it was Matt Logan against that guy, Nick Matheny, one of our bros here on the show. And uh, it was a great game. And Coach Logan was always he's always wearing shorts. This game was in January last year. Now they moved up to December, but he doesn't care. That's Short. why I like Coach Logan. He wears shorts all the time. It, like he wasn't trying to intimidate someone, right? You know what I mean? Like he goes out there and the cold doesn't bother him. No. So he's a grown man. Uh, it was a, evil. It was a great game last year. As you can see, there was a USC versus UCLA color uniform scheme. Um, this year, they got sweet new unis from Ken Sporting Goods, Adidas uniforms. Yes, and they're going to be uh, a true red and a bright blue, kind of like the Dodger blue almost. Is that what it's going to be? It's almost like a Dodger blue, a little, little different hue. But I believe that the uh, San Bernardino team will be wearing blue and the Riverside will be wearing true red. Did you know that, Coach Bruick? You're blue. You go. He's got his. <laughs> he's got his blue on. I hope you're right, Jeff. I think I, you're right. I, 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 I found out today. You got your sources. I did. You got your I sources. Did. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be live on Riverside TV this Saturday night, December fifteenth, uh, seven o'clock kickoff between the Riverside County All Stars and the San Bernardino County All Stars. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, as you can see at the top of the poster, it says the biggest game in history. It will be the biggest game in history. It always is. And plus to have Coach Bruick and Coach Meyer. Getting together yeah. in an all-star game, that's always a well, good time. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this because Coach Brewer could be on next. There's, there's a certain uh, – there's like a Mount Rushmore of high school football coaches. And I was thinking about this, and I'm going to date some of these. Some of you are, are going to listen to this and go, who are these people? I'm thinking of guys like Nate DeFrancisco, a longtime coach at, at uh, RCC. I'm talking about Mike Churchill. We're talking about Don Markham. There are so many great coaches that have come from the Inland Empire that it's, it's wonderful to have uh, Coach Bruick and Coach Meyer uh, come back and coach these young guys because they're the wisdom, they're the voice, they are the true Mount Rushmore of coaches. Yeah, we're not, you, know, you don't see this very often, so if you've got a chance, uh, come on out to the game. Uh, if you're watching it live on Riverside TV, we'll make sure we give live updates yep. um, of San Gorgonio and Kaiser as well as we cheer them on for state championships. And one final note, Jeff, here. Uh, something about nobody wants to play Centennial High School in football. 
No, no. Nobody, nobody wants a piece of the Huskies. No, because they're, they're a Division I college program playing against uh, little kids sometimes. So here's the fun. We're going to wrap this up with this. So Centennial High School uh, had tweeted out yesterday that uh, they, they still need two games for next year, uh, and it can be in either week zero, week two, or week five, and they just simply wrote, we are willing to play anyone. Hey. Anyone. Ken Batdorf has a game. I'm going to talk to Ken Batdorf. Do it. Novi playing Centennial. Remember, they coached together at the, at the infancy of Centennial yeah. High School. Yeah, just get together. They, yeah. they, if they each need a game. Why not? But, of course, I ret- we t- you know, retweeted it, and there's, like, been 30 comments, and everyone's coming out of the woodwork because, again, Centennial will play anyone in the nation. And they've tried. They could play the Raiders. They could maybe get them. <laughs> might beat the Raiders. <laughs> they could beat them. But two years ago, they had a nine-game schedule because That's they right. could, they could right. not get a tenth game. They could not find another team to play them. So they're already trying to be proactive. I thought they had their schedule set, so maybe two teams bowed out. I'm not sure, but they need two games next year. Well, now. you remember that they changed the rules that the out-of-state uh, football teams can't come into in California and it doesn't count for certain games. There's a new rule that's, that's coming around, so maybe that's what happened because they do play a number of out-of-state teams. Yeah, so if you're a coach out there watching or an AD or whatever and you want to play Centennial, uh, week zero, week two, and week fives. And if you want a good laugh, go into the comment section of their posts. Because, again, everyone's coming out of the woodwork. Everyone wants a piece of the Huskies, and everyone's like, you know, the the voice of reason comes out. Someone tweets out, yeah, I don't know if you really want to play Centennial or not. So, but yeah, they do need two games come next year. When we come back here on the Inland Sports TV show, we're going to go one-on-one with Dick Bruick. The legendary coach is in the house today. And coach of the All-Star game. So we'll talk All-Star football. We'll talk a little Kaiser Cats as well with Coach Bruick when we come back here on the Inland Sports TV show. What's up? It's Patrick and Forty Morning on 96.7 KCAL Rocks. You're watching the Inland Sports TV show. We love you, Pep. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick, quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temescal Canyon Road. You're going to save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. God, first of all, I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just 
just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's, that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuum and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. And welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. The legendary Dick Bruick in the house here. Coach, I was getting so excitable over here talking about Sanji and Kaiser. So to be straight, it's Kaiser against Wilcox. Right, Wilcox. And Sanji against Rio Linda. Yes, Wilcox. And they are um, kind of a known program up in that area. Santa Clara, yeah, the Bay they, Area. They, they're, the, you know, they, they seem to be one of the, I don't know that much about them, but they seem to be one of the guys that uh, has had some success. So it'll be interesting, you know, I mean, it's hard to travel that far, but uh, Billy and the guys will have them ready. I, I get real excited about the Kaiser staff because uh, the, the coaching staff at Kaiser probably has uh, six or seven, maybe eight ex-players on it, you know, besides Billy and, yeah. and all that. They, they have, I'm thinking, Irk. They got the Ozier brothers. They got Dennis. I oh, mean, they might have ten. <laughs> they you might, naming them yeah, off. they might have ten players, you know. And, and then they got a, they got a couple of influsions from Redlands, so that's good, you know. Yeah. They got them some different ideas that they weren't all the same. So, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of exciting for me to see those guys do so well. Well, you know, speaking of Kaiser in the state title game, and, and going back to your Kaiser and Fohai days, of course, a 16-game season. This is a long season, right? Right. You know, like I, I, I told Bill, I said, okay, Bill, you're on pace. You know, you've already set kind of the the record, so to speak. Yeah. With 14 wins, that's the record for Kaiser. We we had only won 13 there ever before, so they they did that, and then. They got a chance to win number 15, which will tie Rev for the San Bernardino County record for the most wins in a season. And this was the, the Rev team in 2014, I 2014. think it was? 2014. Yeah, when they yes. won state. Yes. Well, Coach, let's talk All-Star game. Here was, uh, this was the scene on, on Saturday. That right? was the scene Grand on Terrace Saturday. High School. There, yeah. there, there's you right in the middle with, yeah. with Kurt right, right next yeah. to you. And uh, are you excited about coaching in the uh, Inland Empire All-Star Classic? You know, uh, it, it, it's kind of got me off the couch, I guess, so to speak. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yes, we are excited. You know, it's uh, probably – I was trying to figure this out. You know, it's either the third or fourth time I've coached this game. So, uh, it, it's uh, – it's one that we've seen grow, and I don't think people realize what an excellent all-star game it is. You know, I've been involved in a lot. I mean, at one time we had the city slickers versus the country bumpkins, and it was the city of San Bernardino, Fontana, Rialto against the high desert and, uh -huh. and all that. And that was way back in the 70s, the early 70s, uh -huh. the, you know, probably about 73, 74-ish. And uh, we've seen that. And then uh, most recently, a few years ago, we uh, were fortunate. I belonged to the Southern California Football Coaches Association, and uh, they had a game where they asked me to coach, and it was uh, Southern California, part of our association versus the whole state of Arizona. I, I remember that. That was at RCC, that wasn't was a, it? We, we played it twice. Yeah, I remember that game. We played it twice in uh, Arizona in surprise at the minor league baseball stadium mm -hmm. there. And then we played it twice at RCC. At RCC yeah. And Under Armour was really good with it, but the Arizona Football Coaches Association had a real problem, and they ended up dropping the game. You know, so that's unfortunate. That, yeah, it I was. Remember that it, was game. It, it was. It was a fun game. It was good and bad. There was good and bad to it. You know, I like this game better because it's local, and I think the the kids can relate more to this game. They don't, <coughs> excuse me, they didn't relate a lot to playing Arizona. It's yeah. just, it was like pride, but this way they don't they, know they, the other kids. They know the other kids, yeah. and they've played against the other kids and all that, and they've seen you guys on TV talking about the other kids, and so here we go. So when you get the phone call that they, they want you to coach, did you think, oh, man, I'm not coaching anymore? Or you were, did you have the bug, the itch to get back on the sideline? This is, this is what I said. <laughs> Let me check with the boss. Yeah. 
That's my and wife. And she said, yes? And the wife says, well, whatever you want to do. I says, okay, now let me check with the second boss. Kurt, <laughs> if I'm coaching this game, you're coaching this game. Dad, I told you we were never coaching another All-Star game. I said, yeah. <laughs> but if I'm coaching this game, you're coaching this game. So let me know. And so... Uh, that's how it works. And there he is in the picture. So we know it's know. <laughs> yes. yeah. so we know what's happening. I mean, you know, we had we had a great plan. We had a great plan. We were gonna get, you know, we we're gonna get all the old Fohai coaches together, but uh, it didn't work out as well as we could. So we got their sons. We got uh, we got John McKinney who 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 coached with me for 35 years. And uh, we got Skip Fazio's son, Vinny, coaching with us. Who sounds and looks like exactly. the same guy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then we got a kid named Jody Panettone who coached with us. And he played on the 87 team and started coaching with us as he was going to school and uh, coached with us probably all through the early 90s, you know, before he went down with uh, another kid who played for us and coached with us, Challenge Tessitore, is coaching the game as well. And uh, he played for us and coached with us. And then he went and opened up his own program at Gary and then at Desert Hot Springs. And he went to Cajon. Won, the, won their CIF, and uh, I've watched Rich in his whole career, and now he's an athletic director, and as an athletic director, they don't allow them to coach in the San Bernardino district, so it uh, gives Rich a week to coach football, which... Yeah, yeah. He, back on the sidelines yeah, for him, too. Yeah, he gets a little excited about, so there we have it, you know. Now, we, uh, I think we got great players, don't get me wrong, but we didn't uh, get, you know, JD's not going to play, and I don't blame him, come on, he's got a... He's got a big decision coming yeah, up Thursday. He's got a lot more important things yeah. in his life, you know. Uh, but you did have one practice already. We did know, have one practice on last night. night. We practiced last yeah. night, we're getting ready to go to I'm, I'm yeah. out of here and I'm going. Oh, the practice was great. We had great comp competitive practice. You know, uh, everything was good, you know. Um, we got a lot accomplished, and uh, we got... Three more nights of that, and then uh, they have a banquet for the kids, and uh, it's kind of cool what they do at the banquet. Uh, I don't know. You know, the, they tell the kids, the best-dressed kid gets 100 bucks. Yeah, they still do that. Yeah, they, I'm going to come in with a suit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can win. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going for the 100 bucks. <laughs> I'll at least wear long pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's semi-formal, yeah. right? It's not too fancy. But, but we're uh, having, they're having that over at Grand Terrace. And then the game is at Grand Terrace. And it's kind of, you know, okay, for at least the last 10 or 15 years, the game has been in Corona, somewhere in Corona. And that, that's the, 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 no wonder. They're, they're, they've been the, the elite football area yeah. of the Inland Empire. Was that Centennial last year? Yeah, yeah. and at Corona High before that. Yeah, and right. I mean, and like I said, they're the elite, you know, the Big Eight is the elite league as far as I'm concerned. But this year they decided they wanted to try something different. And they moved it to Grand Terrace, which is kind of right on the borderline. It's, it's central to it's, a lot of And it's right there right? off the freeway, and it's a nice new school and all that. So... Let's see if the crowd gets better. You know, there's a lot of options, although uh, nobody's playing in the game. If you want to watch the high school football, watch it Friday night and watch Grace Brethren play. And so, because we like Grace yeah. Brethren, that's another that's right. Fohai kid coaching right. Grace Brethren, Josh Anderson. Coach Anderson, yeah, Aquinas. Yeah, yeah. and Fohai. just watch, watch them on Friday, and then you can come to our game on Saturday because there ain't anybody any, that you're really interested in watching on Saturday night anyway. You can come over to our game and, uh, and see some of the local kids Put on their high school uniforms for the last time, you know, the last that, time. Yeah, and that's that's kind of an emotional thing, too. Uh, I mean, some of these kids will play in college. Oh, some of them, this, this could some be Some of them will be the last time they ever put on a uniform, yeah. you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, and it should be a good game. It should be a good game, you know. Coach do you Meyer, take it seriously? Like, do you on, go into no. it like, oh, we got to win this game, guys? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Does, do you think Coach Meyer is – is taking it seriously? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, we're going to have fun with the game. We're going to get all our guys a chance to play and uh, get a, give them a chance to do something with the ball in their hands, all the athletes, let them do something with the ball in their hands and, uh, and move on, you know. Um, and, but these guys do such a good job with it, you know. The sport clinic started it, then created the sport foundation, and uh, – Jim Clover, Jim Wynn, and Jerome Wall. And Jerome Wall and Jim Clover were really the guys behind this yes. whole thing, and mm -hmm. they're the guys that made it. But Jimmy Wynn then got really involved yeah. and helped them and all that. And uh, Now Rodney Kyles, David Zink. Yeah, all those guys yeah. are in it now. And it's, uh, 
It's so cool, the things, I mean, because this is their tradition, and this is how we're going to run the game. And if you don't want to go with their flow, then don't coach or don't play. Yeah, because it's easy this, as that, right? This is their thing, and they love doing it. You know, I don't know if people also know that they give out scholarships yeah. to the players that play in the game. They have a chance to apply for scholarships. I think it's... Thousands of dollars. Yeah, I, I think it's like $1,500 on each side or yeah. something like that, you know, that they give out. I know that Vinny Fazio, one of the kids that's... Uh, yeah, okay, and so but we got three running backs, and uh, they're all pretty good, and they all good, you know. If we're going to run the ball, depends on how good the O-line gets in the next two nights. That's right, huh? <laughs> yeah. So when you, when you go into a game, uh, you know, and you probably have a game plan, but do you, in the back of your mind, are you thinking, too, I want to get all these guys in there? You know what oh, I mean? Oh, we like, got to. No, no, that's the I, goal. I know this is not like AYSO soccer and everyone gets a ribbon, but did you try to make a conscious mm -hmm. effort? Hey, they're an all-star. Let's get they're them They're all going to play. And, yeah. and our goal is to let all of those skill guys touch the ball. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and you can say, well, the defense could take it away from receiver. Well, we'll we can figure out a way. If it has to be on a jet sweep or something, we're going to. Just gonna get in the wall. Let them yeah. touch. They didn't come to the game to block. Those yeah. guys didn't. <laughs> they came no. to the game to touch the ball. Yeah. You know, the old line guys came to block. They're, they're, they're ready. But the old the line, uh, yeah, they block, and the skill position guys, they want to get um, some tape. Because I know it, in the past, a lot of college coaches either come to the actual game or they'll watch it online, maybe even after the fact, and they'll right. go back through and be like, hey, that guy, he had a pretty good game. I, I should probably give him a call or call his coach and see what's his deal. Okay, this is what I told our players. Okay, the last All-Star game that I coached was at one at RCC. We had one guy who acted like a buffoon lose his scholarship from his behavior at the game. And we had three guys get scholarships from their behavior at the game. So I just told them, you be whichever one you want. That's right. You just be whichever one. So, and then it, this is kind of a good time because next week is the early signing day for football. They get to sign next Wednesday. Never used to be like that. It's always that first weekend in, or first February, week in right? February. And so with this early signing period, and the coaches can then look at this and say, well, we didn't get the guys we wanted. So now there might be some guys available, and this game gives them a little opportunity. Who knows, you know? But you're right. The, the timing of the, the All-Star Classic and that early signing period works out perfectly for these guys who are still maybe trying to get some exposure, get noticed still. Except that uh, we couldn't get the quarterback from Apple Valley because he's going on a trip this weekend. But that's a heck of a lot more important than playing an yeah, All-Star game. Yeah, you know, that, that's the, this time of the year, right? You're, you're yeah. making those final trips and trying to make yeah. a, a big decision uh, about your college future. Coach, and any final thoughts? Thoughts about the All-Star Classic and uh, going up against Barry Meyer this Saturday night at Grand Terrace? Well, you know, uh, Barry Meyer did the smartest thing he could ever do. He got Matt Logan to help him. Well, so, that's, so that's not bad. That, 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 that was a pretty smart move by, by Barry <laughs> Meyer. So already, you know, that was a pretty smart move. <laughs> do you know Coach Logan at all? I know Coach Logan since back in the days, like uh, when he was just an assistant with Geringer and the boys. Uh -huh. you know? Yes. He yeah. turned out okay. He did all right for himself. <laughs> coach Logan is the stud. Yeah. He, is, you know, he is really a good football coach, but he's a better person. You might think he's a great football coach, but he's a better person. Well, if, you, if you're connected to any teams that need a, a game, I know Coach Logan and the Huskies would love to play somebody. Well, you know, <laughs> he can go over our buddies at St. Louis and uh, Hawaii. Yeah. They're always looking for games over there, but they make you come on the island and they make you practice where all those people watch you and they make you, they make you play with their refs. But uh, one, of their, one of their guys that coaches there coached at uh, Fontana with us. Oh, really? He was on the coaching staff at the, on, on the 89 team, yes. Funny yeah. you say that because the, the tweet that Centennial put out there, one of the comments was, hey, play St. Louis yeah. in Hawaii. I think that's what well, – Marcus Mariota, right? He, I yeah, think he came, he from, came from there and Tua came from there. Yeah, Tua, Alabama's yeah, quarterback. And, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, they, have a, they have a real reputation. They, you know, the head coach is Cal Lee, and he's been around, and his brother Ronnie Lee, the, they, they, they're like 
institutions on that island, you know. And then their other brother was one of the guys that came over here to Portland State when Portland State first started running the run and shoot. And uh, that's how come they throw the ball so much down there. Holy smokes, you know everybody. You know where all the coaches are at and where they came from. Well, you know. <laughs> Just tells you I'm pretty old. <laughs> just tells you I'm pretty old. Been doing this a long time. Well, Coach Brooke, it's always Thank a pleasure you, to see you. Thank you. Thank I you. hope you have a good practice tonight. Uh, we're going to. Uh, we're going to. Uh, yeah, Kurt running the offense. You'll be fine. Challenge running the defense. I just walk around, you know. <laughs> you going to wear shorts on Saturday night? No. No? No. A little, I never wore shorts to a football game. Never? Never. It wasn't your style? I always wore jeans because I was going to work. Did you ever wear red pants? No. <laughs> I always wore jeans because I was going to work. <laughs> I had to ask you because Kurt Bruick, uh, one you of know, our favorites. Uh, one time, one time though, I got a Steeler slap for wearing a hat, you know, but now I wear hats, so we got rid of that. <laughs> it's <tradition>. okay. Now. <laughs> it was bad luck to wear a hat, so I had to. Get a slap for one time. <laughs> the legendary Dick Bruick here live on the Inland Sports TV show. When we come back, we'll talk a little California Baptist basketball. We'll be right back. Doing. Coach Ray here. We're back at the BPC. Wanted to continue our movement-based mechanics here. We're talking about a back pedal. So today we're going to demonstrate how we program our back pedals, how we teach mechanics, and uh, how we execute. Come check it out. So one of the first things I like to do with my athletes before we actually get into a back pedal is I like to work on the movement patterns of an actual back pedal. So what Cruz is going to do, he's going to get into a staggered position here. So let's go ahead and bring those, those feet in a little tighter. All right. And so what I'm looking for with that backward movement, I'm looking for a push off that front leg and then a step back with that that uh, the back leg so it will be due to, to simulate that movement is we're going to do a step to a lunge so you're going to go ahead and push off that left foot with the ball of your foot and you're going to lunge back with the right so ready go then lunge it down and then bring it back good go give me a couple reps of those and we're doing that step to lunge so we're simulating that movement pattern of the back pedal we're going to push off that front leg and step with the back and relax. So what we'll do is we'll build off of that and we're going to go into an actual back pedal now. So go ahead and get in your two-point stance there, our staggered stance, Cruz, facing the camera, facing the camera. All right, and all you're going to do is give me a quick back pedal. So we're going to simulate that movement pattern with a push and quick step. Here we go, ready, and go. Good, there we go, right there, bring it back. Go ahead and alternate feet, alternate feet there. And go. Good, so you take a look at the footwork here. Those first two steps, we got a push and a step. Push and a step, ready? Go! Good, nice job. Backward movements, how we teach our pedals, how we progress them, right here at Boost. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner, clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway, off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for.
And welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. You know you're putting in a good work day. You're punching the clock. Grab your pail and your hard hat because I got jeans on. Jeff does not have jeans I, on. Well, I, you're not ready knows, for work. I never wear pants here. No, you don't. You really no, don't I've have pants No, I've got no pants on. on. You got goosebumps. I got it's really, really cold in here. Man alive. It's a, it's like a meat locker in here. It, it's always like this. Oh, my gosh. Yes. When it's when it's like 110 out, like it feels good to come in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's go inside the Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling as we catch up with the CBU women's basketball team coming off a big win in the Crosstown Showdown against UC Riverside. They also had a win over the weekend. Um, against Fresno Pacific. Now they got another old PacWest foe with Notre Dame de Namur coming into town. So let's go inside the Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling with the CBU women's basketball team. The California Baptist women's basketball team picked up their first win against UC Riverside since 1987 as they win this edition of the Crosstown Showdown by a final score of 65 to 57. They were led by Brittany Thomas who had a monster game, 21 points and a career high 20 rebounds. Big win for the Lancers as they take down UCR. They're also coming off a win against old rival Fresno Pacific. They're also going to get Notre Dame Dayton Demur this Saturday. And the Lancers are off to a great start as CBU continues to push forward in their first season as a Division I program. Big win in the Crosstown Showdown. I think a lot of it had to do with Brittany Thomas. I mean, she had a ton of defensive rebounds in the second half. Um, some of our guards were chipping in too, though. Um, we were mixing up defenses to kind of keep them off, off balance. And yeah, I thought it was a pretty good team effort, but I mean, Thomas was amazing on the glass in the second half. Yeah, we just couldn't quite get a lot of rhythm. I mean, it's two pretty evenly matched teams and we play contrasting styles. And so sometimes it's a little choppy, um, but you know, Emma was able to get a little bit of space and that, that definitely was good for her to get a little, and kind of get you a couple deep breaths, get you a little confidence and kind of like gave us a little bit of confidence as a team too, which was good. Um, so yeah, I was really happy to see her get going. You really got two choices when you're going to lose those kind of games. Either you're going to quit or you're going to keep fighting. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about being resilient and, and just kind of sticking with it. Um, you know, tonight was a good example. You know, it wasn't a perfect or a clean game, really, but um, we kind of made some hustle plays at the end, some toughness kind of plays, and I think that was the difference in the game. Um, everything. We're passing the ball. We weren't being selfish. Uh, we're looking in at the post, and if they double team, then pass out, and then our guards were just getting great shots. And a big one coming up for California Baptist women's basketball. They're going to take on UC Santa Barbara coming up. That's that'll be a tough test. Well, yeah, and I was looking through their their schedule. You know, they're they're four and six right now. Pretty good, pretty very good for the first year. But they've played UC Santa Barbara. Uh, Cal State Northridge, Fullerton, Long Beach, and UC Riverside. So they've gone through basically the entire it's a Big, Big West, West schedule, right? Yes, pretty much, pretty much. So they got uh, Santa Barbara coming up next Wednesday, the 19th, and then they go into WAC play, Western Athletic Conference play with uh, New Mexico State will be their conference opener, the first ever game in the WAC um, coming up on January 3rd. Now let's transition to uh, men's basketball just for a moment here. Uh, they took on UC Irvine, and I know we were watching that game closely because, you know, we've been covering the Big West Conference for a while yeah. now, and now we're going to be covering the WAC. Um, but they took on UC Irvine, who probably is the best team in the Big West. The and, best by far. And they almost beat them. Yeah, I think it was a three-point loss. Yeah, 69-66. Yeah, and they were they were tooth and nail the entire time. And uh, UC Irvine, Coach Russell Turner, he's, you know, people have told us that they have two starting fives that could compete yeah. in the Big West. Uh, so a very, very solid effort by the uh, Lancers and Coach Rick Roy. All right, let's punch up some of that video of their three-point shooting, including Milan Aqua, who has been unbelievable this year, Jeff. Uh, we had a front row seat when they took on UC Riverside just the other night, but CBU at last checked, there were only nine teams in all of Division I college basketball that have hit 100 three-pointers. Not attempted, but actually made. And CBU is one of those teams. This is a very good shooting team. Milan Aqua, the transfer from Washington State, is a big reason why. Oh, I'll tell you what, Milan Aqua, we're going to talk about one thing about this guy. He is no other Division I player that's averaging more in all four statistical categories. He's averaging 22 points a game, 
five rebounds a game, four assists, and two plus steals. Nobody in Division One basketball is in the lead, and he is in all four. Yeah, he's been fantastic so far. In fact, tomorrow um, I'm going to head on campus. I'm going to interview Milan, and we're going to have that segment next week on the Inland Sports TV show. Uh, so we'll talk about the great start for CBU, his great start with the Lancers, the three-point shooting. Um, and I also want to ask him about he's friends with Lonzo Ball. The Lonzo Ball from the Lakers. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a very big deal. So I'm asking about Lonzo Ball. All right, you, you do that, Pep. I'm going to do, do that. I'm going to do that <laughs> big time. Ask so. about LeVar. Ask me. I want to know about LeVar. No one wants to care about Lonzo. They want to know about LeVar. LeVar. He's been out awfully quiet, <laughs> LeVar Ball. That'd so maybe quiet. I'm going to ask Milan. Ask him if he has a pair of those shoes, too. Which ones? Ah, the Zio, the, the, <laughs> the Zos. <laughs> no, at CBU, just, you live the three stripe life, man. It's Adidas. I, Adidas. You, you can still ask. You got to see if he has a pair of those shoes. <laughs> That's all I want to know. I will ask him for you. All right. Uh, CBU men's basketball coming up. They got Southeastern Louisiana on Monday, uh, next Monday, December 17th. A couple of games actually in the state of Louisiana, but Southeastern Louisiana on Monday, December 17th. Um, and uh, again, they'll have whack play right around the corner as we go into the new year, 2019. So that is Inside the Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling. So best of luck to CBU women's and men's basketball going forward here. And of course, we'll be talking a lot more about the Lancers. We're also going to be talking about the Highlanders when we come back, coming off a historic win against Pepperdine, going into this game against the University of Texas El Paso. So we'll talk Highlander basketball when we come back here on the Inland Sports TV show. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods, they have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temescal Canyon Road. You're going to save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change. Uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. And welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. Talking a little UC Riverside basketball as Jeff and the Highlanders gearing up to head to the great state of Texas, UTEP, the University of Texas El Paso, for a game on Sunday. They're going to play some hoops. They're going to eat some big steaks because you're in Texas, right? You got to do that. I'm going to bring my passport and I'm going to walk over to Juarez, Mexico. It's, I'm going to get some street tacos. It's right there on the border, you're right? Darn right. I'm excited. It's going to be a fun-filled international trip <laughs> at going to UTEP. <laughs> Okay, so UCR is coming off a, a huge win against Pepperdine. They had not beaten the Blue Wave since, what was it, 77? Yes. I think it was 1977, the last time they beat Pepperdine. 
Jeff, I, maybe I'm over-exaggerating because I do that a lot, but maybe this is a turning point. Maybe this is like a, a signature moment, a signature victory when we look back on David Patrick's career or the season at least that UCR, maybe they are trending now in the right direction. Well, I think they're trending in the right direction because they, they're starting to get an identity. We actually saw this team, you know, they were, they were fired up. They, they, we saw dunks. We hadn't seen dunks all season Two long. dunks. We saw the entire bench involved, and we saw them hold the lead. That is something that they haven't done the last couple of years. They've been in a lot of close games, but they haven't held the lead, and they did so against a very good, athletic, young Pepperdine team coached by a legend, Lorenzo Romar. Yeah, that was, that was a big win. And that Pepperdine team already had some quality wins on their resume this season. So it's not like they were some slouch. I mean, this was a, a very good Pepperdine team that UCR beat. They beat Abilene Christian. And I saw Abilene Christian up at the University of Pacific uh, tournament, and they were the best Division One team I saw all season long, and Pepperdine handled them pretty easily. Hey, you mentioned dunks. I, l I like big dunks, and I can't outlie. Uh, there was two. One was a huge, like, bring the roof down kind of dunk from a Johnny Kennedy, the pride of the Rancho Verde High School. A Johnny Kennedy now seeing a lot more playing time at UCR, making the most of it. Here was a Johnny Kennedy's big dunk against Pepperdine. Kennedy drives in, throws down the dunk, and the foul! A Johnny Kennedy that was puts huge. some extra I was so on caught it. off guard. Is that the second dunk in 10 games? Yes, it is, my friend. Not wow. bigger than that. 69-66, the signature moment of the season, and we just saw it live on Big West TV and Riverside TV. Wow, Jeff, I'm stunned. What a turn of events here in the second half. That was it, man. That dunk, and that was with like 30 seconds left. There, it was a one-point game. Yeah. I mean, that was a absolutely huge play and a dramatic to kind of put that uh, the dot on the exclamation mark on that win. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great it was a great team win. We saw guys like Menno Dykstra step up. We saw uh, McCray step up. We had... Uh, you know, Dikembe Martin, one of the most solid point guards in the Big West, he just does it day in, day out. A very, very good game from all three. And, in fact, the entire team. It was a team win. Maybe the best game in the career of Menno Dykstra, the senior, the big man out of, out of the Netherlands. Maybe his best game ever in, yes. a, in a Highlander uniform, right? Yeah, and he was great in the second half. I believe he had 16 points in the second half. He had a big-time dunk. But I'll tell you, he really is kind of the backbone of this program. Two years ago, he was the, you know, the leading three-point shooter on the team. He was third in the entire conference. This year, or last year, he you know, had some leg issues. But it's nice to see him trending up. He's, he's getting rebounds. He's playing excellent defense, and he's got that jump shot back. And the Netherlands is a nine-hour time difference. I actually yes. talked to him about his family, his, his mom and grandparents actually get up at like whatever it would be like four in the morning yeah. the next day four in the morning to, to watch or listen to Minnow's games here uh, for UC Riverside so here's Minnow Dykstra following that big win against Pepperdine I think definitely even some assists in there, which I never do. So, yeah, <laughs> I would say this is probably my best game uh, as a Highlander since I've been here. And you, you had a dunk, and you had a couple, you know, some threes. I mean, you did a little bit of everything inside and out. Yeah, you know, I don't dunk that often, so when I do, it's quite, quite fun. You know, it's a good time. Um, <laughs> Maybe you'll do more of it now. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. No, it was just the momentum. We, we were feeling great. We had the momentum on our side, so I saw nobody. The guy, he's a solid citizen. Uh, and everybody on the team genu genuinely is attracted to his personality. Yeah, he's a good dude and uh, playing some good basketball. Hopefully they can keep it going Sunday afternoon on the road at UTEP. Jeff will have the call live at GoHighlanders.com. So, Jeff, when we come back at this very desk on Tuesday, we could have two high school football state champions. So that's what we'll be talking about a lot coming up on, uh, on next week's Inland Sports TV show. And probably your trip on, uh, at UTEP. Are you going to take pictures and video along the way? I'm actually going to get video. I'm going to send it to you. You're going to have to 
piece something together for me. But yeah, I'll tell you, we're going to be talking about the steak. We're going to be talking about <laughs> Juarez, Mexico. And we're going to talk about that two-game winning streak that UC Riverside is going to be on. Big thanks to Johnny Nunez, Anthony Trujillo, and the whole Teen Vision TV 16 team back there. We appreciate their support. And again, uh, we'll be covering the high school football state championships the 34th in Inland Empire All-Star Classic, the All-Star Game coming up on Saturday night, and some uh, big games on the horizon for CBU and UCR. So there's a lot going on this time of year, Jeff, as, as we're going into the Christmas break. And remember, high school basketball is gearing up. We're going to have these big Christmas oh, tournaments. I'm going to uh, Riverside Poly at Notre Dame tonight. Ooh, I'm going to that game. That's a huge one. That's a hu that's their league opener. That's, that's Yancey Dodson Ooh. versus Rob Robinson. That is a battle for the mm. ages. Mm, can't wait. That's going to be a, a good one out there. Big thanks to our sponsors, Spoiled, Quick Quality Oil Change, Kin Sporting Goods, Boost Performance Training, and Catalano Motors in Corona. We love you guys. We'll see you next time on the Inland Sports TV show. Where is it?